What is a crack everyone? It is Nathan here, aka the Rambling Kern and head instructor of Kern School of Combat. So, as some of you might have seen in my previous videos, I am quite a fan of the sling and using the sling. And this is something that I have self-learned um, over the years. And I just find it a very fun um, weapon and tool to, to play around with. Um, I probably first attempted to make one um, when it was probably 10 or 12, kind of in that age range, and I've continued to play around with them since. Um, every time I go hike or go to the beach or anywhere where I have an open area that I can play with one, I tend to uh, to use them. So the one I actually have is this one here, uh, which you've probably seen in my Glenmalore video. Very simple thing, um, some braided rope, a loop on one end for your finger to sit in, and a knot on the other to go over and be held uh, between your fingers like so. And then you have a uh, woven pouch, which is just a slip pouch in this one. Um, as you can see here, a very simple little split pouch design. Um, and whatever object you kind of sit in there will generally hold on to. Um, very simple um, to use, takes a bit of finesse to, to get used to it. If you load in your rock, into the pouch, one, two, and release. Now, these appear throughout Irish history. Um, however, we have a lot of very early references to slings. Um, we have a few finds of slings, and then they kind of disappear. And yet they pop up every now and then. And it is a very interesting topic, in my opinion. And it's one that's been asked numerous times um, in the comments for me to cover. So I thought this would be a nice time to uh, to start. Um, so starting off with the very basics. Um, there is two words in Irish for a sling. So there's basically two types of sling. Um, and the first one we have the word uh, tellum and tavel. So this is essentially this type. Um, however, most of the references we have, instead of a woven pouch like this, uh, the pouch tends to be a leather pouch. Um, now the other type that we have uh, is often referred to as a cron tavel, or a wood sling, or a staff sling, um, or occasionally kind of a tree staff. That's basically what the, those two words mean, cron and tavel. Um, or a, sorry, a tree sling. Um, now, the, these two types are quite different in how they're used and the kind of purpose they have to them. So one is often called the uh, shepherd sling, um, basically a pole with a, a sling on the end of it. And this can be used to sling much heavier, much larger rocks. Um, and the smaller sling, like I just showed, uh, generally kind of egg-sized rocks, uh, especially for that size, is kind of ideal. Um, and actually kind of egg shape usually works better as well. All the way up to uh, your staff sling, which you have much bigger um, rocks that are used for it, kind of up to orange size. And we actually see throughout Irish history different finds of both of these. Um, however, we don't really find the pouches. The main reason being, or sorry, we don't really find intact slings. The main reason being most of these would have been like this, made from linen. Um, and that does not hold up very well in the ground. Um, however, we do actually find the actual pouches themselves. So we do have two uh, examples. I have a picture of one, um, which I'm going to bring up on screen. Now, these slings were found in uh, Dublin. They both date from roughly the 10th to 11th century. They were found on Southgate and Fishamble Street. I'm um, sorry. Southgate, which is a uh, now referred to as uh, Fishamble Street within that area. So you have two of them, uh, one which is plain that has four vertical slashes and the other which is six longer vertical slashes. And as you can see from this, um, they're kind of diamond shaped with these vertical slashes down it with a little fold on each end for a string or a cord to basically sit in and be lashed onto. 
So this shows that, especially in an area like Dublin, where you'd have fortifications, these were probably used on the wall to fire down onto people, um, or perhaps because these were found within the uh, actual um, streets of Dublin, that perhaps these were being used by uh, soldiers or warriors or perhaps even shepherds um, who were kind of coming and going through the city. It's very hard to know. Now, we do, as I say, have much earlier references to slings being used in Ireland and probably the most famous, and I think this is probably why I get questioned on this so much, is Cúcullin. So for those who don't know about Cúcullin, he was um, and is kind of one of the most famous uh, warriors within Irish mythology. Um, and there is a very famous um, series of stories called The Ten. I would highly recommend uh, people checking that out. Um, now the sling is referred to in that on numerous different occasions. So one of the real interesting things about the sling in this is obviously how prolific Cucullin is with it. Um, he very regularly does very, very impressive shots with it. Um, and he also does some very impressive tactics with it. So one of the ones that really stood out to me was the use of basically Cúcullin following uh, an opponent's army, so Queen Maeve, who he was uh, fighting against at the time, and this opposing army, he was chasing them at night, uh, raiding their camp, killing their soldiers with a sling. And how it is described is they put out all their fires, and he was basically using the outline of them, uh, with the background of the stars, to sling them and kill them. Uh, really impressive, really clever use of the environment and the terrain that he had available to him. Now, as we get into the Viking period, we do start to see a handful of references to how the sling was kind of viewed as this Irish weapon and the uh, bow and the throwing spear were kind of viewed as this Viking weapon. Now, this is probably isn't something as simple as it's a cultural thing for one group and not for the other. Chances are this is more so a societal thing, depending on your rank within society. And this is actually something that we see referred to with Cúcullin, that when he was young, he was basically told that he shouldn't learn to use the sling because it's kind of beneath his social rank. This is probably quite true within the period uh, when the Vikings start to appear in Ireland. So just something to kind of uh, take into account when you're kind of focusing on that. Now, like I said, apart from those two finds within Dublin, we really lack a lot of information about slings in Ireland, what they look like and how they were used. So if anyone has any further information on that, and uh, this is now my request to you guys, if you can help, because it is a topic I would love to dive into further. I would love to make a number of slings and I would love to test them out. And uh, as you've probably seen me do uh, some throwing with uh, the sling that I showed you there a minute ago, I would love to test out some of the things that are referred to in um, the various different Irish um, stories and basically just kind of see how the designs and types that we have referred to kind of hold up and how they are used in uh, actual warfare. So the sling does continue on throughout history. There is much later references um, in other parts of Europe. I did find one in the 1500s for uh, their use in um, France and obviously the staff sling actually continues on for quite a while and seems to be quite popular I imagine uh, for siege warfare is very popular and um, it's just for those who aren't really too sure what it looks like you kind of think of a trebuchet arm but held in the hand um, so the sling rather than being held in, the, in your hand is basically one end which would be this end and not an end is pinned onto the top of the staff this end sits over a hook like this, you wind and wind, and then when you're ready, uh, you are pop this on, pop your stone in, and then when you're ready, you fling the whole arm, this comes off, and away goes your stone. Now, like I said, one of the interesting things that actually we see in both Ireland and the UK is areas where slinging stones are actually produced. Um, there's one or two of these I actually would like to try to find because uh, there's one not far from where I am in County Wicklow. And basically these are stones with a number of circular indents put into them. And um, the theory is that these were 
primarily used for producing stinging stones. Basically, the, this was an ideal type of stone. People would hollow into them and use these stones for slinging. Now, obviously, we have, as a result, a large number of slinging stones that have been found. Um, and these are very specific, usually, like I said, kind of egg-shaped. Some are circular, uh, some down to kind of small egg size, up to kind of large orange size. Um, you find quite a few of these in around chronos as well, kind of leaning to that tendency towards them being most likely being used quite a bit in siege warfare. Um, as I mentioned, that seems to be the predominant style of warfare in Ireland during much of the medieval period and a little bit before it. So one thing that I did find, which I would love to find again for their information on if anyone can help, is a reference to the people of the Clada, which is an area in Galway, um, doing and holding slinging competitions in the 1950s. Now, this is fascinating. So if anyone has any further information on this, I would really love to um, basically find out anything I can about it, what sort of slings we used, if there's any pictures or archive footage of it, please do reach out. The reference that I've seen to the competition is that basically they would work to hit a shilling from as far away as you could see it. Um, what distance that is, I don't know, but I imagine shilling is a reasonably small coin, so to be able to hit that from any sort of distance, even 20 feet, would be quite an impressive feat to pull off. But very interesting that the use of the sling maintained its way all the way up to that point. Um, so if anyone has any further information on that, please do reach out because I'd be fascinated to know more about it. Now as I say this, I do hope to make a bit of, a bit of a series out of this. There are a few different um, references and things that I've come across, but the sling in Irish warfare really seems to be something that is just completely glossed over and ignored. I think it's one of those things within history that people kind of become enamored with the bow and with the swords, um, but also they survive because arrowheads survive and sword blades survive. With the sling we only really tend to have stones and that's really all we can go by. However, we do have a handful of pictorial evidence in Ireland. If anyone can find any more, please do reach out. But there is this one that I've managed to find. And this one is of a uh, soldier with a sling or a warrior with a sling. Now, interesting thing about this is it's from a high cross somewhere in Ireland. I could not find reference to where that high cross is. So again, if anyone can uh, enlighten me on that, it would be greatly appreciated. So, I know this uh, video is a little bit kind of open-ended. It was mainly to kind of give you a bit of interest into the topic and to see if this is something that you guys would like me to pursue a bit further. Because I find it is something, like I said, that's very much ignored. It's something that there's not really a lot of study done into. And it seems to be something that at least in the earlier Irish periods was hugely popular in the country. And did it die out or did it just slowly fade away or did it continue and just not really get the recognition that other weapon forms did? I don't know, but I would love to find out and I would love to do some tests with these various weapons and I would love to figure out if there's any further references or um, information that we can find, especially on that uh, later um, competitions that were being done into the 20th century. So if you enjoyed that um, and if you want to help me out and sponsor these future endeavours, I do have a Patreon and um, you can donate as much or as little as you want. Anything really does help. Please do like and subscribe. Everything like that really does help. Once again, thank you for watching. Um, channel's grown immensely, way past anything that I expected, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much, guys, and slum. So